Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at a topic straight out of the DevNet exam track, and that topic is interacting with a Cisco device by way of an API, an application programming interface. Now, there are many ways that we can accomplish this, but specifically here, we're going to look at using a program called Postman to interact with Meraki Enterprise. That Meraki Enterprise instance is found in the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. So both of those resources are completely free. If you wanna go out and grab those and follow along, feel free to do that. You can find links to everything you need in the description box below. So let's get started and jump in. Let's first go out to the DevNet Sandbox. Now, if you're not familiar with the DevNet Sandbox, this is a great, great tool to test out lots of different Cisco solutions. So once you land on the DevNet page, you can get started with the sandbox and take a look at all of the available environments that they have inside their sandbox catalog. Those of course are going to include always on versions. We see an always on version of Meraki here, for instance, and there are versions that you can reserve in eight hour blocks. Now I've gone ahead and made an eight hour block reservation in my case for this particular example. Once you do that, you're going to receive an email prompting you to create a Meraki password that's going to be attached to whichever email address you use with Cisco DevNet, and then you'll be able to log in to your reserved Meraki dashboard. If we take a look at my Meraki reservation page and I scroll down, you're gonna see some information about how we get connected to that and some information just about the topology in general. And you'll see that one important thing we have here are instructions for creating your own API key. I'll highlight that here on the left. So this tells us that once we're logged into the Meraki dashboard, we can go under my profile and we can create an API key. And an API key is a unique identifier that will authenticate users, developers, or calls to an API. So we will need to configure this in order to interact between Postman and Meraki. And again, this tells us that we need to click on the login email from our Meraki dashboard, which will be in the upper right corner. And then we wanna select my profile where we can find the API access section. Now I've already clicked on that area. I've clicked on my username in the top right. I've chosen my profile and I've already scrolled down to the bottom of that page. And I've done that off screen so that I didn't expose any of my personal information just as a note here. So that step you will not see. Once we get to this area, you'll see that we have an area for API access keys and we have a button to generate a new API. So let's go ahead and click that. And once we do that, we have a warning letting us know that this is the only time we will be able to record this API value. And if we lose it, then we'll need to revoke that API and generate a new API key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm going to click the checkbox saying that I have stored my new API and I'm going to click done. Once I do that, in just a moment, we'll see that the API key was in fact generated and we can see when it was last used and when it was created. So now let's jump over to Postman. Now this version of Postman that I am using is completely free, but we also have several paid tiers if you want to unlock more advanced features as well. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a large collection of Meraki API calls. Within the Meraki API documentation, Cisco actually provides a collection of Postman API calls, and that has literally hundreds of test calls included. If you go to postman.meraki.com, which I'll pull up and you can take a look at that here, you'll see that we have this resource available to us provided by Meraki. And in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a button that says Run in Postman. If I click on that, it's going to prompt us to either run this in a web-based version or on a local version. So I'm gonna click Postman for Mac because that's the version that I'm using. This is going to download that collection of calls. And once these are downloaded, you may not see these initially based on your Postman window layout. So back over in Postman, the way that we can see these, we have a button on the left-hand side near the bottom. If we hover over that, it says show sidebar. When I open that sidebar, 
you'll now see my Meraki dashboard API folder. And you can see there are 333 API requests included in this collection. So it is quite extensive. Now we need to make sure that Postman can interact with our Meraki instance. Notice over here we have an environment dropdown window. And at the moment, that says no environment. We don't have an environment set up. And what an environment does is it allows us to group related sets of values together so that we can quickly get up and running when we're working with a particular API. So in our case, we're going to set that up for a Meraki environment here so that we can quickly make API calls to that solution. So I'm going to click this gear button, the settings gear that says manage environments. And in the additional pop-up window, I want to click add, and I'm going to add a new environment here. You'll see that we need to give that environment a name, and the name is only for your own reference, so you can give that an intuitive name. In my case, I'm gonna name it Meraki Sandbox. Below that, you'll see a set of columns, and these are where we're going to define variables. Our variable, specifically the first one we're going to input, is going to point to our API key that we obtained from Meraki. So under the variable heading, the first thing we need to do is to give this a very specific name. The Cisco Meraki documentation actually tells us that exact value, and that value is x hyphen Cisco hyphen Meraki hyphen API hyphen key. That's the variable that we need to input. And under the initial value, we're going to paste in our API key that we copied previously. Once we do that, our current value is going to be auto-populated with the same thing as our initial value. Now we also want to define a variable called base URL. That is also pointed out very specifically in the Cisco Meraki documentation. So the variable name is base URL. And then we want to give that a value of HTTPS API dot Meraki dot com slash API slash V zero. So that particular value again is referenced in the Cisco documentation. You want to make sure that you get that right. Again, once we click in the current value column, it's going to auto populate with the same initial value that we've put in there. So with both of those variables in place, we can see our variable name here. We have everything that we want. So let's click add. And now we can see our Meraki sandbox. If we click on that, we'll be able to see all of the variables that we have previously defined. So now we can close out of this window and under our environment dropdown, we can choose our Meraki sandbox environment. Now from our Meraki API collections here on the left, let's go ahead and expand that. And you'll see that we have lots and lots of subfolders under here. So let's go down under our organizations folder. And these are just a way that they organize all the different calls that they provide. So we see organizations, let's expand that. And from here, the very top call is get organizations. So let's click on that. And when we do, you'll see that that's populated in our workspace. You'll notice that this loads up a get request and you can see there's a variable for the base URL. When we hover over that, you'll see that it's using the variable for the base URL that we already defined for this environment. Now let's click the blue send button and see what happens. You'll see that we have a status code returned of 200, which means things were okay. It means the request was successful. That's a good sign to see. And at the bottom, you can see the output of our get request. We have the ID, the name, and the URL. Now the relevant section here is our ID. This is our organization ID, 549236 in this case for the DevNet Sandbox. This ID is going to be necessary for some other calls that we want to use. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm going to copy that. Now let's go back up to the top beside of our environment dropdown box. We'll again click our manage environments settings area. We can click on our Meraki sandbox and we want to add a new variable in here. That variable is going to be called organization ID. So again, this is referenced in the Cisco Meraki documentation. Once we have that variable name, we'll paste 
our organization ID, make sure that copies over into the current value, and we will click the update button. Then we can close out of that window and move on. Now over in the left collections window, let's collapse this organizations window and let's look under the networks folder. And if we scroll down some, the option I'm looking for is get organization networks. So when we click that, it's going to open a new tab in our workspace with this particular request populated. When we run this, this is going to return our network ID, also something that we want to know for more in-depth usage between Postman and Meraki. By the way, we can change our query parameters. You see that at the moment, the template ID is checkmarked. We can actually turn that off in this case. I don't need that. And I'll again point out our base URL variable, hovering over that, points to the URL that we configured as a variable. Additionally, you'll see the organization ID variable, which points to that new variable that we just put in. So let's click our blue send button on this get request and see what happens. Once again, we see our status code 200, so that's good. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see more information. Again, the relevant section that I was looking for is this ID number. Now you will notice that we have multiple ID numbers for multiple networks here. So if I go back to my Meraki dashboard quickly, you'll see that on the left, we have a selection of networks. We can actually click that drop down, and these are all of the different networks that we have available in this reserved sandbox. If I collapse that, you'll see that my current network is called DNENT3. So that's the particular network that I want to search for in my Postman output. So let's jump back over to Postman. Notice in our output area, over on the right, we have a magnifying glass and that will let us search through this output. So I wanna search for DNENT3 and that does highlight the specific section of the output that I was looking for. So let's go ahead and copy this network ID and we will again add a new variable. So once more, we'll click our settings box here. We will click on our Meraki sandbox environment and we want to add one more variable here at the bottom. This time we wanna name that network ID and we will similarly paste the value in there that we copied from our output. Make sure that copies over under the current value. We can click update, then we can close this window. Now we're able to do some more advanced things with Postman. Let's close a couple of these request tabs out just to clear up our workspace a bit. And let's scroll back up. We'll collapse our networks folder. And this time let's go up to our devices folder. There we are. Let's expand that. And let's see some of the options that we have under here. Let's choose get network devices. And then you can see that loads a new tab into our workspace. Again, using the base URL variable, this time using the network ID variable. So let's click our blue send button. We get status code 200 once again, and we can scroll down to see information about the devices that are on this network. We have information including the geolocation, the Mac, the local IP address, the serial number, the model, the firmware, and more. So now let's look back in our Meraki collection. Let's collapse this devices folder and let's go under SSIDs. We have a folder for SSIDs and this is going to return a list of the SSIDs that are configured on the Meraki network. So let's click get network SSIDs. We'll click the blue send button. We see our 200 status code and we see our returned information. So we can see all of the SSIDs that we have configured. You can see that these start by numbering the first one as number zero. And that name is DevNet3. That's the name of the SSID. If we scroll down, we have a couple of unconfigured SSIDs as well listed under here, following numbers one and two and so on. So let's go back to the Meraki dashboard and let's go under our wireless menu on the left and let's look at our SSIDs. What we see here should match the output that we received back in Postman and it does. We see our only enabled SSID is called DevNet3. So we can retrieve this information, but we can also change this information. Or in other words, we can also provision things from Postman. So let's go back to Postman and take a look at doing that. 
So we still have our previous output of all our SSIDs. And if we scroll up to the top, again, note that our main enabled SSID is number zero, and the name of that is DevNet3. So let's look at renaming this SSID with a put request. You'll see that on the left, still under our SSIDs folder, we have a put request for updating network SSID. So let's click that and load it here in our workspace. Notice that one of the path variables we have here is the number, and this is expecting a number variable. Now we don't have a number variable configured, but if we want to specifically affect our main SSID, SSID number zero, all we have to do is to delete this variable value and just simply put in zero. So this will make sure that it affects our main SSID. Now along the top here, we have some different tabs. If we look under the body, this will let us see the actual put request. Now when we send this, if we leave it just as it is, this is going to rename SSID zero from DevNet three to my SSID. Now we could change that if we want to, but in this case, I'll just leave it as it is and we'll click the blue send button to see what happens. We do see it returned a status 200 OK message. And in the output, we now see that number zero SSID is named my SSID. Let's jump back over to our Meraki dashboard and let's confirm this. So here we're back on our SSID page. Let's just refresh our page. And now notice that our active SSID has been renamed to my SSID just as we expected. So that's a look at using Postman to interact with Meraki by way of the API. Now this is just one way to accomplish this. And there are many different APIs in the Cisco world that we can use in a network programmability manner to kind of automate some of our more tedious tasks. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.